Closed captioning for the professors is provided in part by the Clifford Law Offices, a personal injury and wrongful death law firm in Chicago. In the world of higher education, achieving tenure means you're guaranteed a job for life, but not necessarily anymore. Many colleges and universities are replacing their full-time professors with part-timers. What impact is that having on the quality of higher education? That's coming up next on today's edition of The Professors. Joining us to talk about the end of tenure are Michael Crenshaw, professor at Daly College, Khalil Marar, professor at Governor State University, Pat Obi, professor of finance at Purdue University, Calumet, and Chanel Harris-Smith, professor at Kennedy King College. Welcome, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, we're talking about tenure here. Uh, would someone maybe like to start and tell us a little bit about what tenure is, historically what tenure has meant, and uh, where tenure is today? Uh, I think it has two dimensions. One is guaranteed employment um, so that there is no retribution uh, to protect academic freedom. And the other part is that you're expected to basically be an owner, if you will, of the university, uh, not just simply an employer of the university, or an employee of the university. And it's, it's, it's basically meant to protect academic freedom first and foremost um, through lifetime employment. But is it really necessary today to have that? I mean, Absolutely. especially the college level. Years ago, uh, if someone was doing research and perhaps was doing research on a topic that um, perhaps establishment disagreed <clears throat> with, it would be a way to protect them. Say, for instance, Copernicus today yeah. would have you know, been banned or barred from uh, doing the kind of research that he did. Um, do you feel that it's necessary at a college level Most or at a level it's, lower? It's more necessary today in all education fields, in my opinion, um, because we need to have protections so that, you know, when you say the world is round, um, that there aren't authorities that try to get you fired because they think the world is flat. Um, and it's something that's more necessary today, especially since there's a lot of controversy in every single field that's represented on this table. But I, I think that the for-profit colleges and universities may disagree with you. Sure um, because if you look at this from a business standpoint, you know, the minute I say for profit, that means I'm interested in making money. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's, that's the goal. So, you know, just to throw that question out there, why give you ninety thousand dollars a year when I can give you five sixty five a credit hour to do the exact same job? You that's know, right. I, I know plenty of part time professors who are very good at what they do. So, you know, some people like to make the argument that you know you want to have um, full time tenured faculty. Because you know you know they've been trained, they know what they're doing. They are they have a vested interest in the university. However, if I'm a for-profit college and I'm run by say Apollo Group, um, I can easily bring in people from the business world. You know these are the contacts that I have. Mm -hmm. They already make over a hundred thousand dollars a year. I can turn around and say, okay, well I'm going to give you just a thousand dollars a class to teach my students, and now I can tell this to my students, and my students can turn around and say, hey, you know what? I'm getting educated by somebody who's actually in accounting right. or actually a lawyer. So right. now but, not but, only am I learning from the them, field, right? So not only am I learning from them, but now I can network. Sure. Yeah, but let me ask you, okay, so you have people that are actually practicing the craft, and it's always great to have at a university, but if someone's an adjunct pr professor and is not there as often as a full-time, especially tenure professor, uh, don't you think that that short changes the, pay the students also, that there should be a balance between uh, having full-time and adjunct faculty? I mean, I agree with what you're saying, mm -hmm. But don't you think there has to be a balance in in yeah. that? Uh, but, but I'm not so sure medium? that I'm not so sure though that that's the argument. The argument for tenure, which actually began in the uh, in the early 18th century, was as he mentioned, um, Khalil, was to preserve academic freedom. That way, professors who have the um, the onus of freedom of ex of expression would not be um, uh, wouldn't be harassed on account of that. You know, so going forward, I think the question today is whether we're creating value for our students um, with tenure protection or 
whether we are inordinately increasing the cost of education for our students on account of tenure. And I think arguments on both sides of that equation are valid to a certain extent. And in fact, prior to coming to this show, I was inclined, I was inclined, I would have inclined to toward his uh, viewpoint, except of course that in the aftermath of uh, what happened in Washington DC boatyard, and the professor from the University of Kansas tweeted uh, blaming the NRA for what happened and they wanted to get rid of him from uh, University of Kansas, I started to think to myself that if in fact the First Amendment could not uh, protect this individual, then of course um, tenure, which of course is a tenured professor at the University of Kansas, ought to be the basis to ensure that he has the rights to express himself mm -hmm. in the way that he did. Mm -hmm. I think if all things were equal, you know, we wouldn't be having this conversation. But the fact that you have, um, you know, 60 percent in climbing of adjunct faculty on campuses, you know, that that's an issue. You have to have um, a permanent, uh, you know, group of persons who are a mainstay. Who I uh, like the way you put it. They they are not just employees. They are a part of the the university or the, even the college. The college we need that too. Even though uh, tenured uh, faculty is not doing research. Um, they still are a part of the culture. They're outside of the school building institutions that, you know, make a name for the school. They're constantly adding more. And adjunct faculty just don't have the time and opportunity to do those things in most cases. So the quality of education, that bar has to be set by the tenured faculty. And then, you know, the part-timers can attain to that. And I like to use the word, the, the term part-timer as opposed to adjunct. Mm, sure because sure. adjunct mm -hmm. is actually kind of derogatory to us. Um, so, and actually contingent is as well. So, you know, to say that we are not an integral part of or a necessary part of the college's mission is completely unfair because if it were not for us, half, more than half of the classes wouldn't get taught. That's right. Mm -hmm. but, so, is, but is tenure really necessary for a teacher to be effective? Absolutely do you, do you not. It's not tenure? necessary, no, no. but we need those people. We need the people to be institution builders inside of the university. Oh, I don't want to continue to use university inside of the institution right. and outside. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have someone who was driving to three campuses trying to make ends meet, when making ends meet become a part of your mission, then I'm sorry, something is going to be sacrificed. Yeah. And I'm speaking from personal experience. Yeah. Uh, right now, I work. I do work at the campus full time, and I teach two classes part time. I save about an hour and a half in travel time. I save about an hour in prep time, packing literally packing for three different places that I have to go. Yeah. So I was able to take on these two classes because though I work a full time position, I still have extra time in my day to devote to my students. Yeah. I've always had office hours, but some adjunct faculty. They, some part-time faculty cannot do it. So th in those instances, the students are absolutely shortchanged. If you are full-time and you are tenured and you are sitting on campus from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon, you have to see your students. You are available to your students. Sometimes adjunct faculty, part-time faculty cannot be available so that the students the students miss out. So, so we need to so set that bar. I, so standard. I think what you're, you're getting at is that we do need a hybrid and that the tenure professors are sort of an anchor and then you could fill in with exactly. a, the part-time well, professors. And, and this is, I mean, the, the problem is it used to be that part-time adjuncts, whatever we want to call them, used to be just that. They were people that basically are practitioners. I mean, the whole concept of the adjunct developed because there are people who are practicing in specific fields, technical fields. Sure that need to be on campus presenting to students about the craft that they're exercising. The cutting edge. Exactly, the cutting mm -hmm. edge stuff, right? Technology, science, math, and stuff like that. See, now we have a system that basically is exploiting adjuncts, part-timers, and literally replacing the necessity for tenured full-time partners, partners of the university that own the university, with this low-cost labor. The purpose of adjuncting now has become 
to save the university Thank money. You. And the truth is, it's not tenure that's costing the university money. Absolutely. If anything, tenure saves the university money because they don't have to do these last minute sort of maneuvers right. and they can actually bring in better students, better quality of students. The problem is that you basically have a situation now where you have this expendable, exploitable labor force that has all these years of education only to face, to stare down the barrel of a gun of the adjunct, right? <laughs> to basically go from place to place, yeah. to pack up you know, their food and their belongings and practically live on their car, right? I mean, these are basic people who are being treated horribly by institutions mm -hmm. wow. they're academic gypsies and I'm glad that the university <laughs> that the university at which I work doesn't really in my department for example we have zero we have zero part-time slash adjunct faculty and there's a good reason for that because we want to deliver to our students the best quality service the best quality education and you can't do that with somebody who's being exploited well, they're upset they're inherently exploited they're people who are being mistreated and I think we need to examine the nature of of tenure, but also examine why it is that we have over 60, possibly even a 70 percent of our courses being taught by adjuncts. This is a travesty in the American education system, and we need to nip it in the bud immediately. Well, don't hold oh, back, yeah. uh, uh, Khalil. And I agree, you know, to uh, quite a uh, uh, quite a bit of an extent to what you've said. I, I think, though, that going back to what Chanel said, we need to make a distinction between a tenured faculty and a part-time faculty. Sure. You can have a full-time faculty that isn't tenured. And in fact, there right. are many such faculty in many universities. Sure you know, so I think what a lot of people who are a little bit leery about tenure um, uh, are saying is that you don't have to offer someone tenure to get quality instruction from that Absolutely. individual Absolutely. you know and, and some individuals like Professor Witherby out of uh, University in Texas he used to be a tenured faculty uh, at the University of Minnesota and uh, eventually gave up his tenure just to make the point yeah. that tenure isn't required to bring quality out uh, out of uh, uh, college instruction. It must be what, nice to be able to do that. Well, mm -hmm. what, yeah. so the argument there is you can offer faculty multi-year contracts and still place them on full-time so you have to understand that in some cases, tenure has become a burden on many universities where unproductive faculty still have to be kept just because of tenure. On the other hand, I agree with you that if you are creating substitutions for the use of part-timers who may not be qualified, and I think that's the point you make, yeah. you know, who may not be qualified, then you'd be compromising the quality of education. That's right. So ultimately, for me at least, the point to be focused on is quality of education, which can be compromised with tenured faculty that have become dead wood yeah. and with yeah. ill-prepared part-time faculty. But I think that, Pat's but, making a great point. Yeah. But I think we all agree that that's the minority, not the majority of that's professors. Right. There that's will right. be some professors that um, are uh, not effective. And uh, I'd like to ask uh, Khalil here, what do you think about the uh, part-timer, okay, that, that, that's in fear of uh, what the students are going to say on the end of the semester <laughs> that's review. Great, that's a great um, question. A tenure, pro tenure yeah. professor doesn't have to worry about that, yeah. right? Nick, that's a, that's a great question. And so it far is. as, I mean, the, the, you know, part-time adjuncts, whatever we want to call them, are, in fear. are mortified of the student evaluations. So you basically have a situation in which they basically are trying to keep students <laughs> happy, right? If that's the purpose of education, to keep students happy, then we have failed but in our endeavor to educate. But the consumer model is... It is the is, consumer it, model. It, it, it's what it's, it's pushing. Correct. Right? It, it absolutely is. I'm worried is. about what my students are going to write about it me. So is. I can't be strict. I can't have an exam where, yeah. you know, I, I feel that they weren't, you know, weren't prepared. Right. And therefore, you know, I didn't curve it. I said it wasn't going to be curved. Perhaps it might be, but they perform, performed so bad. Right. And then I said, you know, I'm going to fail three students. And I can't I, do that. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I think that adds to what you were saying in terms of the deadwood type professors who are just hangers on so sure. to speak however I, there's one thing that i kind of want to disagree with a little bit in terms of you know there's only a small percentage of tenured faculty who are deadwood i mean i agree i, 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 I can speak number. right i'm gonna get in trouble for this one today <laughs> but i'm gonna say it it's about five of us who are tenured faculty who are on all the committees who do all the work mm -hmm. who who don't just teach and go home there's a, quite a number of faculty, not just at Daly, but throughout the city colleges. And I'm speaking to someone who's a former department chairperson. 
it is very difficult to get that person who's been teaching for 10 years yes. to be on that committee, participate in HLC, even though they know that if you don't get that accreditation, you're basically going home. Right. I, can, right. I can talk for the next three hours in terms of how hard that is. <laughs> yeah. So I think that not only is that administration's argument, but that's also the public's argument. They see certain professors who will only work 20 to 25 hours a week. They teach, they go to office hours, they go home, they're not participating in any kind of recruiting. They're not doing any of that stuff. And so people are saying, why should we give you, as if you're a public funded institution or a privately funded institution, why should we give you $100,000 a year to work 20 to 25 hours again, a week? That's, that's, that we, are, we have right. to emphasize right. and make a distinction. That is the minority of people, the overwhelming so. majority of professors, be they tenured or tenure track or adjunct even, do an honorable job. And look, mm -hmm. if there is deadwood at an institution, we have to question what the institution did wrong to bring about somebody who exactly. basically becomes process. tenured, right, in the mm -hmm. hiring process. I mean, look. And sometimes you may not know. Well, so, yeah, we know. Know. Well, that's, but let's not mince words. I mean, I mean, it's a brutal process to get tenure. Tenure track is not exactly this process that, you know, is basically a walk in the park. It's very intensive. It's very involved. You but have to prove your record in terms of teaching service and publication. And if the institution makes a mistake and tenures somebody who's not proven in those three things, then if there's Deadwood, which is the minority of people, that's the institution's fault, well, not, the, not the professor's fault. Let's break down the Deadwood. Let's say, how much, what percentage of the Deadwood do you think is uh, contributory from uh, not an effective scrutiny process exactly. by administration and uh, fellow, fellow faculty? And how many is it the onset of laziness and just, you know, lacks of days as uh, the years go by? I think sure. it's a combination, but I, I think it's more so the ineffectiveness of the process, I think, yes. um, especially when you get so to close tenure. Get, that's really terrible. So it's tenuring them that's a problem. Yeah, the, the tenuring so process be, is, yeah. is, I mean, you know, I know for us on, on the uh, city college level, I mean, we have a brand new tenure process, which I think is going to be, which I think is going to be very effective, but look at the length. I mean, you know, for city, for city colleges, community colleges, what? Two and a half, three years. Three years, three years, that's it. So, I mean, you know, you can play the game, as I like to call it, <laughs> you know, pledge of attorney and sorority for mm -hmm. two to three years, do everything you're supposed to do, be Mr. or Mrs. Goody Two Shoes, mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the moment you get that tenure, you don't have to publish. You know, there's no publish or perish with us. So, once you get that tenure, there's nothing else there. And, and also, when it comes to post-tenure, see, with us, post-tenure is, is this, slap on the wrist. I know I'm going to get in trouble for that, too. But <laughs> that's but what it is. But it's you're tenured, right? Right, I'm So you protect it. Right. You could say that. So I can say that. But, but what I'm saying, when it comes to post-tenure, that's what it is, a slap on the wrist for, for the city colleges. So, yeah, I, I think the process, you know, needs to be a little bit tougher for More some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that, right, we're, we're questioning tenure itself, like the idea of tenure, and that's not what we need to be questioning. We need to be questioning first individuals and then the process of tenure. Mm -hmm. Is it strenuous or strict enough to weed out individuals that we feel or can see that in 10 years they're not going to be as gung-ho as they were to get this tenure? It's not tenure well, well, it's itself. Well, strenuous enough, I think, and, and we have to remember <laughs> the two P's, right? I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's promotion, right? You don't just get tenure and and sit on your laurels. I mean, this is why the system is effective post-tenure in the sense that a lot of people do have to worry about promotion. Being promoted to full professor, having the pay raises, that still is something that you don't really skirt just by getting tenure. And I might add that because they're partners, this is why the, you know, the tenure system is very effective because it treats people as partners at the institution. There's pride, the second P. They have to have pride in their institution. That's precisely why they want to teach well. That's precisely why they want to publish. That's precisely why they want to serve their That's institution. Mm -hmm. So look, every system has abuse. The question is, do we need to throw it out because there is abuse? And we have to be very careful about this, especially the professorate have to be very careful about this because there's a lot of powerful sides that are arguing to get rid of tenure for a financial motive. Right. And we have to resist at all costs. And actually, right. if anything, we should invert it from you know 60%, 70% part-time slash adjunct and 30% being tenure to 80% being full-time tenure track, tenured, and the, the minority, right, returning rightly to people who have a specific craft to offer as adjuncts. We must do that, and if we don't do that, it really is the death of our profession and the death of the American educational model as we know it, something that emerged <laughs> yeah. from the 16th century, something that emerged from the Renaissance yeah. and the Enlightenment. Right, so the first part of the 19th century, there was tenure in some universities. After World War II, GIs came, you know, coming back wanting to go to school, created a uh, shortage of faculty, and that's when tenure really grew between 1945, 46, uh, through the 50s. Yeah. But 
the idea was we wanted to capture and, and grab good professors. Mm -hmm. So by doing this, are we doing the opposite right now? Well, you know, that, that, that brings us back to the in initial point, which is, are we creating value on account of that, mm. or are we destroying value? And, uh, and I would argue, based on that, that to a large extent, we have created significant value. Because if you observe, a lot of the top research work out of research institutions are actually research published by tenured faculty. That's right. Many of them, but non, at least non tenured, also also publish. Of course, and, and, of course they do. But I'm talking about of course, of publish. course they do. But they I'm talking about books. That's and, right. Of course they do. But I'm talking about we're, we're we're talking about the tenured faculty and the extent to which they add value to universities mm -hmm. in the field of business and finance in particular, which is the field I'm I'm much more familiar with. You know, most of the top um, works that um, have uh, ascended to the ranks of uh, Nobel uh, Prize are all published That's by right. tenured uh, full professors. And I am a full professor. I'm not so gung-ho on tenure, by the way. However, if you see it as a way to incentivize an employment system, then it's a good thing. And I see that also as one th something that doesn't necessarily compromise the quality of work that you bring into the institution. Because if you're from a research institution, and I'm from one, uh, like he mentioned, you'll be actually, um, you, would, you would feel totally disenfranchised mm -hmm. if you did not do the kind of things that would keep you, you know, sort of keep the kettle boiling for you. Okay, so I brought up earlier the Copernicus uh, situation. And years ago, that was important for someone at a university if they were conducting research, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, private companies, the private sector is, is a huge part of research and development in whatever science it is. So if you are doing something that is not considered part of the establishment or something that's very strange, uh, awkward, if you can find a company That'll, that'll take you on, you can do your research and development there. You don't necessarily be, need to be in a university setting, whereas 80, 90 years ago, that was not the case. Sure. You'd have to usually be at a university to be conducting certain uh, type of uh, research because most companies didn't have the, the, uh, the means to, to provide that kind of uh, an environment for but research. That may not be the kind of employment that matches your career goal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, it's a combination, definitely, of the two. Mm -hmm. Let me ask, how many people, uh, how many of the uh, professors here are tenured? I know you are, uh, Pat. You yeah, are? Yeah. The tenured side. Still this working. Is the, no, so we have two that are and the two, two that are not. <laughs> has, or has the tenure changed the way you, you teach? No, not at all. Um, I, you know, I've been in education for 13 years. And, you know, for me, I... Actually, I, I find that I do more work now as a tenure faculty because, like you said, ownership. Me too. I, yeah. I've, I've taken ownership of my school. And I say, okay, Daly College is where I am. You know, this is where I belong. This is now I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we stay strong. So for me, I actually feel as if I do more. It hasn't changed me. It, it hasn't made me, you know, become lazy. You're not Deadwood. I'm not Deadwood. Yeah. <laughs> not at all. I'm not Deadwood yeah. at all. So okay. for me, it's, I, th I think it's actually made me stronger. Sure. Well, then it Co has changed you, well, Professor. Not, well, well, not for the but, but, but see, the <laughs> He didn't ask it if, if it changed you for the worse. Right. It has changed you for the better. And so that is my argument. I know as a full-time, even as full-time without tenure, professor, instructor, I would be a better and more effective. That's, there are things, there are piles of binders of things that I would love to develop, but I do not have time. Mm -hmm. I could not have brand loyalty of any kind when I'm teaching at three and four schools. Yep. Mm -hmm. when, when one campus does not have an adjunct faculty workroom, yep. when one campus does not have me anywhere for me to put my little lunch because I have to eat while I'm driving between two and three places. Where one campus does not have, they have one computer. Yeah. Khalil? And it's slow, usually. You can't, what, what do you, you think? Can't. Um, how do you envision yourself you uh, know, once I'm, you have tenure? I'm very fortunate to be part of Governor State University. We have a very wise leadership. And long ago, the professors and the administration at my institution have basically put into place a system that they constantly keep renewing and updating to reflect the reality of the time. So, so my experience is not exactly indicative of you know, sort of the run of the mill you know, institutions. I'm, I'm fortunate to be part of, a, of an institution that actually does things right. But at the same time, when we look at institutions outside of mine, the way that they do tenure 
and the way that they do, you know, part-time and depending on adjuncting and things like that, right here in the Chicagoland area. I mean, you basically have a situation where the majority of the faculty that are there are part-time, are adjuncting, and these universities are raking in large amounts of money. Now look, when you do that, right, you basically have a situation in which the students are being underserved because adjunct faculty and part-time faculty, and I'm not saying that Chanel underserves them at all. I've heard about her reputation, it's wonderful, but you do have adjuncts, present company excluded, adjuncts and part-time faculty that really do not do the honorable job that the full-time tenure track, tenured faculty do because they want a sense of pride. They need a of sense ownership, of pride. They sense have of a sense of pride and, and, and ownership. And, yeah, and again, and again, the point, yeah. the point not to ignore is, is the fact that uh, not having tenure yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be condemned to a part-time position. Correct, exactly. You can, there, you there can be middle... full-time and have multi-year sure. uh, contracts. And we have those sure. at Purdue sure. University, Calumet, and, yeah. and they're just as productive. There are different models. You're absolutely yeah. right about that. Mm -hmm. yes. but we, and we also have to be careful about talking about productivity. You know, If we're going to basically gauge what professors do based on how much time we see them in the office or how much time they're putting yeah. in, I mean, that is a ludicrous concept. This is the McDonaldization. And nothing wrong with McDonald's, good food, right? Good company. <laughs> right? But this is the McDonaldization. It really is, right? it really is the McDonaldization of, of education, right? This, we're, not, we're not making widgets any more than we're serving fries and a Big Mac, right? Great food. I'm not saying anything about McDonald's. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is that, you know, for, you know, for those people that were condemning because they're working 25 weeks as being Deadwood, they might be the Nobel laureates. They might be the people that are creating the most innovative research. They might be the people, look, I mean, our workload has increased, right? We didn't have email 20 years ago. We do have email now where literally five, six hours of your day are spent answering emails, right? Um, we have, for example, social networking. We have the concept of online education. So just because you're only seeing somebody for 25 hours, right, that's just the tip of the iceberg. You don't know how much you're working to produce, to, to consult with students, to serve, and to do all the other things that are required of tenured, tenure track faculty, and heck, even part-time and adjunct faculty. One of the greatest abuses that we're seeing is that they're expected to be included in the university, to serve the university, to teach really well, but without any of the requisite pay, and without any of the respect, the, the and without any of the belonging. Exactly. Okay, and well, the computer is still slow, by the way. Unfortunately, we have to <laughs> cut the show here uh, uh, to its close. I'd like to thank you all for coming. That's thank our you. show for today. <laughs> The conversation continues online at WYCC.org. See you next time on The Professors.